All right, my friends. So it is Thanksgiving Day in the United States. It's one of our big holidays. If you're not American, um, think about it. Like Christmas is probably the biggest one. And then maybe it's a three-way tie between New Year's, Thanksgiving, and Fourth of July in the United States. I apologize for not being in my normal environment, but I did take notes about what's going on in the war in Ukraine. And here's our update. Now, I I've titled this about the uh, how to calculate the difference between what's going on with Ukrainian casualties to Russian casualties. I saw this yesterday, and I was going to do it, an entire video just about this, uh, but I'm wrapping this into the daily brief today. So before I talk about that, I'm going to talk about what's happening on the battlefield and what's hap what happened with the missile strike last night and that sort of thing. So uh, 1,220 Russian casualties day over day. Now that's reasonably low given what it's been for the last month or two. Um, about 1270-ish or so was the average in September and then October was in the 13th. And then it's been like 15 average for the day, each day for some time. Um, so I think this month will be the highest month of Russian casualties, but that's yet to be determined. We have a few days left to go. Uh, Andrew Perpetua's list was about two to one Russian to Ukrainian casualties. I can't show it to you, but I, that's about what it is. Uh, and then there was this massive missile and drone strike last night. And I wrote down the figures on here of what exactly happened. So three, or, there were three ballistic missiles. None of those were shot down. 76 out of 85 KH-101 missiles were shot down. Three out of three KH-5969s uh, were shot down. Uh, of drones, 35 were shot down, 62 by electronic warfare. So 12 missiles, the long and short is that 12 missiles reached their target. And that's quite unfortunate. Uh, it did a good deal of damage. Um, so, for example, the area around Lviv, about 500,000 residents are without power in Lviv. Uh, it's upwards of a million total without power. And what Russia was doing was targeting heating and electricity, which is really interesting. Putin said that this was a retaliation for the long long range missile strikes, which I thought I thought that was supposed to be nuclear weapons, which I'm glad it's not, but that's just another red line that he apparently was making up. Uh, so it's not that it's it's going to be these power strikes, but he was going to be striking power and electricity and um, other utilities anyway. So anyway, OK, so, um, yeah, that that's what happened there. They spent somewhere somewhere around five hundred million dollars. I've seen some calculations that the missiles strike yesterday cost Russia $500 million, which is a fascinating amount to be spending with that. Okay, in other news, um, there was a production facility in Moscow that's in flames. Don't know if it's caused by Ukraine or not, but that's kind of an unusual event. Uh, update on the oil, oil depot strike in Kaluga just two days ago, I think it was. Three tanks were destroyed and one was damaged, so we have an update there. Uh, looking at the battlefield, if we're going to look at the front line, uh, I'm going to do the same kind of thing that I've done before. Um, and like for Kharkiv, uh, there were five attacks. Herzan, there were six attacks. Same with Bakhmut, six attacks. And remember, these are all Russia attacking Ukrainian positions. Uh, Ukraine is really in a defensive posture right now, and Russia keeps uh, coming in and attacking. Uh, Kupians, 17 attacks. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I skipped Lyman. Lyman was four attacks. Kupians, 17 attacks. Uh, Raminka is uh, 18 attacks. Trudeau, 18 attacks. And then, of course, the big uh, players are always uh, Pakros with 35 uh, assaults and uh, Karakov with 36 assaults. Uh, just keep your attention on Karakov and um, Pakros. If you focus only on those two areas, that's going to be the majority of what is going on on the battlefield or what's important that's going on on the battlefield. Okay, in other news, yesterday I was talking about is the Russian economy really about to collapse? And it it really is showing bad signs. I, I wouldn't I can't argue 
because I just don't have the evidence that it's about to collapse. That's that's not something that we actually know. But yesterday, by the end of trading, the the uh, dollar to the ruble was one dollar for 113 rubles, and it started off at 106. It's uh, right today, right now, it is back to 108. Um, so again, you have to look at the trend and. That, that doesn't mean that it's getting healthy again. It just means like you look at the trend over time. You don't look at any one particular day. Okay, let's go to what I was promising to talk about, and that is the correlation between Ukrainian casualties and Russian casualties. And I've, I've done this periodically. Every once in a while, I'll have sometimes someone earnestly asking about this and sometimes a troll saying, well, you never talk about Ukrainian casualties. You only talk about Russian casualties. I had somebody say that just two Two days ago. And then I saw this in Euromaidan press. Uh, now they were using the economist numbers. So for the Ukrainian casualties, and if there are better numbers, I'm happy to come out with a better revision of this and try to explain like, no, we have updated numbers. This is better. This came from a British source or an American source or a Ukrainian source, but the economist magazine is pretty reputable. Okay. So the economist magazine uh, has argued that there's about somewhere between 60,000 to 100,000 Ukrainians that have been killed. Okay, so that's just killed. That's not wounded. And then you have another 400,000 or so that have been wounded. And so that that brings you up to well, okay. Now let's contract that. That brings you up. Let's use the most conservative figure and say. Uh, the high end of killed and then the wounded brings you to about 500,000 just for round numbers and to be as conservative as possible by saying like giving the giving the the most latitude okay that is compared to 737,000 or so just roughly just a, about today 737,000 and so 500,000 into 737,000, that's going to be 68%. Technically, it's 67.87%, but that doesn't really mean much because we're, we're using estimates. So about 68%. So when you see 1,500 Russians off the battlefield, you also have to mentally count that there's going to be 1,000 Ukrainians off the battlefield, roughly. I mean, so in some places, there might be a, uh, a higher ratio than not, like in uh uh, Kursk, it appears that the Russians are getting the worst end of the stick by a significant margin. But generally speaking, if you see 1,500 Russians, that means there's probably about 1,000 Ukrainians that are also off the battlefield as well. Now, that figure, that was a conservative figure. The less conservative figure might be as low as 62%, but that still means that there's about two Ukrainians for every three Russians that are off the battlefield. And I'd be far more comfortable if it was three to one than three to two, given Russia's demographics compared to Ukraine's demographics. So that's a way that you can calculate this. And again, I'm happy to revise this and go over this again in a different way if somebody has put in the comments below if I'm, if I'm off base. But this is the most updated statistics from uh, The Economist magazine posted in Euromaidan Press. So that's where I'm getting the data. Okay, last little bit. It's Thanksgiving today. And Thanksgiving, if you're not familiar with it, is a American holiday where the pilgrims who were coming to America, they came to a vast wilderness because they wanted their religious liberty more than they wanted to have all the trappings of life that they had before. And so they'd come and risk their very lives to have this religious liberty. And many died in the process, but um, the pilgrims were celebrating that, that they survived um, and it's, it was a really rough time. So liberty is really important. And I, I can't help but be struck by the concept that today Ukrainians are fighting for their liberty. And if we know anything about what the Russians have done to Ukrainians in Donbass and in, in Donetsk and Luhansk and Zaporizhia, Herzan, and wherever there are occupied territories, what the Russians have done has just stripped them of their liberty. And so as you're celebrating Thanksgiving, if you're an American, or just keep this idea in mind today, um, liberty is valuable. Liberty is so valuable. It's so important. And that's what they're fighting for. Keep them in your prayers today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.